Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest with us tonight. On May 26, 2008, Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie, as a member of a Ranger Helicopter Assault Force conducting a daylight raid in the vicinity of Patia, Afghanistan, distinguished himself conspicuously and with gallantry and intrepidness by risking his life above and beyond the call of duty during an extremely close and violent engagement with an extraordinarily determined and well-armed army enemy. During the initial engagement, Staff Sergeant Petrie was shot through both legs and another ranger was hit by enemy fire. Shortly thereafter, an enemy hand grenade landed amid Staff Sergeant Petrie and two other rangers. Despite his serious leg wounds, Staff Sergeant Petrie unhesitatingly moved to the grenade, grabbed it, and immediately threw the armed grenade away from his fellow rangers. The grenade detonated shortly after Staff Sergeant Petrie threw it away from his fellow Marines, r Rangers, resulting in a catastrophic amputation of his right hand and multiple shrapnel wounds penetrating his body. This deliberate individual act of heroism by Staff Sergeant Petrie saved the lives of his fellow comrades and allowed the completion of the mission. Now, here's your Pentagon Channel report. Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie received the Medal of Honor at the White House. While on a mission in Afghanistan, he was seriously wounded before tossing an enemy grenade, saving other members of his unit. It was probably going to kill all three of us. Um, I had time to visually see the hand grenade and I figure it's got about a four and a half second fuse depending on how long it's been in the elements of uh, the weather everything and how long the pin's been pulled and uh, I figured if you have time to see it you have time to kick it throw it just get it out of there this is the second time since the Vietnam War that a living service member has received the Medal of Honor please welcome Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Eubank, all the way, Mrs. Barnes, and all members of the VFW and Ladies Auxiliary. Thank you for having me here. I'm thrilled to be surrounded by so many great people. Um, just want to add a little bit into it. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, media engagements and whatnot, and to be here tonight, it's really, it's really touched me. I mean, <laughs> up until the point the lights came on and got a little bit choked up just being surrounded by all of you. Um, what's amazing to me is that everyone sitting here in the audience at some point raised their right hand and said, I want to be a part of the team and serve our great country. Regardless of your reasons, You chose to join one of the best teams in the world, the Air Force. I, I was expecting some kind of camaraderie from the Air Force representative. Um, the Marine Corps. Hoorah. The Navy. Wow, quite a bit of Navy. And the one I, I'm a little partial to, the Army. There we go. <laughs> You're all heroes in my book. It's an awesome responsibility to be entrusted to defend the Constitution and the rights of the American people. It requires deep personal commitment. Anyone who serves and is willing to risk and sacrifice part of their life 
for the defense of the nation is a hero in my, my book. Um, not only the, the service member, but the family as well. They sacrifice just as much as us service members. So thank you to you. It was those heroes who inspired me to join the Army. Ever since I was seven years old, running around playing soldier with my brothers, I knew I wanted to join the Army. When I was 20, I went to the Army recruiter and I said, I want to be a Ranger. My cousin was a Ranger, and I knew if I was going to be a part of a team, I wanted to be the best. That was back in 1999, a few years before 9-11. Like all of us, I will never forget where I was on 9-11. I was down in Fort Benning, Georgia, attending pre-Ranger with the 75th Ranger Regiment, getting ready for Ranger School, and the instructors were watching it on television in the field, keep giving us updates of what was going on. All of us training out there, looking at one another and telling the instructors, hey, can we come watch? We're, we're concerned and interested. We want to know. And they said, you, need, you guys need to get your butts back out there. You might be going to war one day soon. And little did they know how right they were. We had no idea where we'd be going, but we knew we had signed on the dotted line to go anywhere at any time. In the years that followed, I deployed twice to Iraq and six times to Afghanistan. And there's, there's, there's a lot of soldiers out there that are still deploying and doing, have done more deployments than myself, and I, I thank them as well. Every deployment, I witness greatness of our armed forces. Our team of service members are true professionals with whom I'm proud to serve with every single day. My fire team at home is awesome. My wife, Ashley, and four wonderful children have gone through a lot as well. My wife Ashley always says, it's more than a job, it's a way of life. My family receives support from our fellow Ranger families, the Army family, and members of our community to help us get through the tough times and continue the life we live. Another amazing team and my true heroes are the doctors, nurses, and everyone who serves in military medicine. As far as I'm concerned, there's no better care in the world. In Afghanistan, I was shot through both my thighs and lost my hand. From theater until today, I've received the best medical care from a team of caring, innovating professionals who gave me the closest thing next to my own hand. I mean, it's, it's amazing. When I lost the hand, I thought I was going to have a hook, which I was fine with having a hook. It was an honorable way that I lost my hand. But when they gave me this, and I, I was just amazed, there's so much stuff I could still do, continue to serve on active duty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For 11 months, I was a resident just, down the, just up the road at uh, one of the Army's premier medical facilities. Tomorrow, I get to go back to San Antonio Military Medical Center and visit wounded service members who are receiving some of that great care I did. Caring for our wounded service members and their families is a priority. In my job at Joint Base Lewis McCord, I am committed to being part of a team that helps special operations service members and their families through their healing process. I am honored to serve in this very important role. The men and women who are injured show tremendous strength, resiliency. A lot of them say, I'd go back in a heartbeat because they love what they do and they love their country. Many of them, like me, continue to serve their country. As I travel around the country, 
Many people ask, how can they help? Here's what I tell them. Encourage businesses to hire wounded service members and military family members. Many wounded service members leave the military and look for pr productive employment when they transition back to their communities. The leadership and technical skills we develop in the military make us valuable to any organization. Continue to volunteer in your community. Encourage others to get involved with your local organizations to help make a difference in the, in the lives of service members and their families. When it comes down to it, do more than just cheer on the team. All of you are amazing members of the military team. Much of what you do helps those who have served and currently serving. You've made a tremendous difference, and I'm confident that you will continue to be valuable members of this great team. Every, every, every engagement I get, I, I, they ask me, what's your message to America? And I, I ask them, they say, what's your message for, for the service members and the troops? I said, for America, just say the simplest thing, a thank you to a service member, a veteran. It's what they deserve. did a little radio interview earlier, and I'd like to share this, what I shared there. I live on the west coast, up in near Seattle area, and with, all right. <laughs> For a long time, uh, we knew this uh, tsunami was coming to the east coast, and it was had the whole country in uproar, and everyone's concerned and worried about it. And I'm hearing all this talk on the west coast, and not as much talk about. Every morning I wake up, I, I think about the service members overseas, boots still on the ground, still in harm's way day and night. And I say, wow, why aren't we talking about that still? They're still over there. I know how that was for me. So, so the most important thing I said you could do for a service member is thank them. Each one's special and that service member will cherish, cherish it. And my thanks, I, I thank all of you, my fellow uh, service members and veterans. It's uh, truly an honor to be in your presence. I was born into a free country and lived free until I had the opportunity to serve myself, and I'm happy I got that chance and the life I live. So thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Rangers, lead the way. Thank you again. Thank you, Sergeant Petrie. We're honored you're with your presence here tonight.